and hello everyone. So, you might be noticing, this is not Eternal. And you'd be right, this is FTL, Faster Than Light. One of my favorite games of all time. It's not so much a competitive game, it's not a card game at all actually, it's more of a single player Starship Commander sort of strategy game. Oh, I, I played this game so much. I. Ay, ay, ay. But, um. Because I have this new computer and I've lost the save data from my other computer, I have to start all over. I got a fresh start. And I thought, why not record my, uh triumphs and failures for everyone to see. So we're going to start in the beginning ship, the Kestrel, on normal mode, with the advanced edition content enabled, because I love the, the uh, expansion. We're going to see how far we can go. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But, but get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. Tip. Hotkeys. You can charge or arm weapons using number hotkeys. So I'm a bit of a veteran for this, from this game. I've been, playing, I've been playing it for years. I've beaten it many times on hard mode. Typically, I will rapidly restart the run until the exit beacon is somewhere I like, but I'm not going to mess around with that because I'm recording. So, let's see. I'm thinking we're going to go here, go here, dear, dear. Maybe I'll go here because I have a much, better, much broader perspective of where I can go after that. Now, yeah, let's start here. Receive our quest. All of our military ships have been destroyed or damaged in the, in the rebellion. However, there have been reports of a Mantis war camp only a few jumps from us. Can you help? I'll ple now. I'm gonna pledge to do what I can, which probably isn't much. They'll give me a little scrap and they'll tell me where the camp is. It's right there. I guess I can go there, but um, this quest usually doesn't end with you being able to do much. the Mantis encampment, but there are far too many of them to count accurately. You send a long-range message back to the Senate with your findings, but unfortunately there's not much you can do. It would be suicide to attack directly. Did this will just, uh, lose you a missile, and get you in a fight with them. You need a firebomb, or some other sort of fire weapon, to effectively deal with this event. I've dealt with it many times before. So I'm just going to leave before they notice me, and this may or may not give me a fight with the Mantis ship. So, something with FTL that uh, is very fascinating and I love it is strategic pausing. Doesn't really come into effect too much with the base ship, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the weapons of the missile. But as long as this is down, they can't damage me. And that's the number one priority, is, uh, is making sure the enemy ship cannot damage you. I'm not using auto fire because I want to know, I want to be able to um, switch on a, on a quick interval if something goes wrong. Now I could have killed them quicker if I could disable the shields or some other system, but... As long as they can't hurt me, it doesn't matter how long it takes me to d destroy the enemy ship. And conserve missile parts by not firing this whenever I can, just slowly firing down with the burst laser. With the patrol ship destroyed, you hasten to leave. It won't be long before the other ships catch up. So, the first thing 
I like to upgrade is shields to level 2. Because once you have level 2 shields, a lot of the earlier game ships can't hurt you. We start with three humans on the Kestrel, and the Artemis missile, burst laser, no drones, no cargo or attachments, just the basic ship. So we're going to go here to this distress beacon, and then we're probably going to meander around here before we make our way to the exit. This red area back here with the arrows, that's where the, after the next turn, the rebel fleet will be. We, do nev we never want to get caught in the rebel fleet if we can help it. Your local nearby human mining colony where an unknown disease has spread virulently. They are setting up a quarantine to contain it, but a riot has broken out. If you send if you send your crew to help control the crowds, there's a chance you'll lose a crew member, which is horrible. If you have an NG, you can there's an option to send in an NG or a rockman to send in a rockman, and that will give you some rewards. Otherwise, it's best to ignore their request and move on. Unfortunately, your mission is too important, and you're not willing to risk your crew. You prepare to move on. You discover a nearby planet speckled with settlements, although none respond to your hails. Just an empty event. I'm gonna go up here, meander down this way. You see a small station fitted with hundreds of repair drones. You see an iron message. We do not know who you are, and we do not care. But this is the right place for some ship repair. Unfortunately, we do not need any repairs, so we're gonna ignore them. Come across a rebel automated scout ship pursuing a, civil a civilian ship, weapons engaged. Aid the civilian ship. You power up your weapons and ignite and engage the automated ship. Apart. You hasten to contact the civilian ship. They respond. It's a good thing you came when you did. We'd be dead now otherwise. I'm a shipwright and I'd like to help and I'd like to help you like you help me. The captain offers to install a piece of equipment on your ship. A laser charger. So the laser charger isn't that amazing a weapon, but for you know, any free weapon is good by me. So I'll probably get that online a bit later. I could upgrade the uh, shields to level 2 right now, but I don't have enough power to power the shields and the engines simultaneously, so I'm going to hold off one a little, little bit more. You arrive at uh, the beacon to find yourself dangerously close to a star. An automated rebel ship in Peru's heat moves in to engage. However, it's got no shields, so it's going to die very quickly to this star. Now it can't hurt me, and it's going to die as soon as there's a solar flare. I should explode, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. So, when there are, when they're in a system with a, next to a sun, solar flares will occasionally deal a certain amount of damage, light fires. The more shields you have, the less fires, the less damage you take. We just have level 1 shield, so we're probably going to have 1 or 2 fires and take a couple of bit of damage. The important thing is to deal with them systematically. So these are both lit in a room where there are no systems to repair, 
no crew members, so we're just going to open doors along this path to the uh, outside, vent the oxygen, that should put out the fires without putting our crew at risk. And then we will jump the next beacon. We're going to go into the nebula. Jumping into nebulas slows down the pursuit of the rebels, but also disrupts our own sensors. I like nebulas because with a lot of if we jump through a lot of nebulas, we get more jumps and therefore more scrap, more resources, more more jumps and journals to deal with before we get to the end of the game. Nebulas are known to be popular mantis hunting grounds. In the duration you would have done well to heat here. Got a mantis in there, so we're going to bring it, bring some human up to help. Took one damage there. I'm going to disable their teleporter so the mantis can't get back. And I'm gonna do this little trick here. I'm gonna move them into this room this guy there, move him, move him back in here, move him back inside here, it'll have him swap positions, so now the healthier human will be fighting the mantis and they'll be working together to kill him. Now they get some combat experience, and I'm just gonna send this human to get healed while the other takes the helm. I think the fire's out, so I'll close those doors, and I'm just gonna keep this burst laser aimed at the weapons to keep it off- to keep it offline. One more volley of lasers should be enough to win. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Afford this shield upgrade. Scanners are showing intelligent life forms on a nearby planet. No match of them can be found in the database. Let's investigate. You land, on a small sh you land a small shuttle on in an enormous field whose only occupants are, t are small, brightly covered, colored, six-legged, horse-like animals. Could they be what your scans picked up? So, try to communicate peacefully will either give you nothing, or something. Bringing back some of the creatures on board to sell never ends well. You, you lose a crew member, they violently attack you, and leaving does nothing. Let's try to communicate. None of your attempts to communicate seem to work, it just stares you silently. As you prepare to leave, one of the creatures canters forward and forcefully nudges you away from the ship. He seems to want you to follow him. Eventually, they guide you to an old NG ship's crash site. Inside, you're able to find and reactivate an NG. You've got some missiles, a drone part, scrap, and an NG crew member, Maloney. So, Maloney is an NG. Unlike, you know, humans, which are, according to the words of this game, boring and uninteresting, NGs are skilled engineers, mechanics, and one of my favorite races in the game. So humans, their racial trait is they learn th they learn skills faster. NGs, on the other hand, NGs, on the other hand, while unclear if they are organic or mechanical, they make exceptional engineers. They repair, they repair things at double speed, but their comma damage is halved. Typically, I like to have at least one NG on my ship to be a designated repair guy, run around, repair everything. And I like to have, in conjunction with that, a mantis, which mantis are the opposite, halved. Uh, repair speed, doubled combat speed, and also a little bit of movement speed, which is nice. So we're gonna designate him to the shields, because we don't have a shield man. And we'll carry on our merry way. I'm gonna visit to this nebula, 
and I can probably visit at least one more beacon before the exit. It's hard to see why, but this beacon is apparently a tourist destination. One of the ships at the small station is offering a deal. I think that's a pretty good deal. Seven fuel at the cost of one drone part while we're not even using our drone parts yet? I like that. I'm gonna go to this beacon and then head to the exit. Scans reveal a large asteroid field nearby. Short range scanners may discover useful materials when we wait for the FTL to charge. Explore the asteroid field. The asteroid field proved more dangerous than expected. Some asteroids managed to get through your ship's defenses. Yeah, that'll happen. There's no, there's no telling what it will happen when you do that event. Sometimes you get damaged, sometimes you find resources, sometimes they get a uh, ship battle. Sometimes other stuff can happen. It all depends. This is the exit beacon. Go here and travel to the next sector. You arrived at the long range beacon. When FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. You come across a large trade station. However, as soon as you approach, a warning goes out to all ships in this region. Do not associate with the Federation Civilizer. All who oppose the rebels will be punished. Let's search among the stores to see if someone will sell to us. Your search for a friendly market marketplace yields no results, but after a time, a small shuttle approaches. They release some supplies in your direction with the message. We are not all friends of the Rebel Fleet. Stay strong. On to Sector 2. Okay. So, I'm thinking we could either go to rock-controlled space and have a shot of mostly green sectors before the end sector, or we could either go through a nebula, have a chance for a nebula and an aggressive, and then have a bit of a varied, a varied experience. I think I want to go for the uncharted nebula, because rock-controlled space tends to be a little tricky. There's a chance of suns, asteroid fields, all these hostile conditions. Now in a nebula, we should get more jumps through, and therefore more resources gained before we get to the end. So we're going to go through a nebula sector and see what it brings us. You've entered a sector thick with nebulas. You'll have to navigate on instinct. I think I'm gonna go down this way, then come back up. Mess around up here a bit before curving around down here. Without active sensors, you have no other option but to look out of the viewports in apprehension. It is eerily quiet. This drone isn't looking for you. Perhaps it's scouting ahead for the rebel expansion, or maybe they're seeking to use this nebula for cover. Regardless, it identifies you as hostile. Switching back to here now, because I figure by the time this is up and running, this will be repaired. Or maybe... let's hold off a minute. Oh wait, never mind, I'll just do three damage and kill them. I was gonna say, we could wait till it powers up and then shoot to make sure we disable it. But considering they only had three hull, it was enough to kill them anyway. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Let's head to the store. The space station here is a traveling merchant who shows you his wares. You can buy fuel, missiles, drone parts, repair our ship, 
hire crew, buy drones, buy systems, or buy weapons. I'm not really interested in any of these... Uh, I can't really afford much, actually. I can sell the laser charger, which I might just do. I think I want to sell the laser charger. Do I want to buy anything else? If I got the drone, I can't afford the drone control. I could afford one of the other weapons, but I don't really think they're worth getting quite yet. I think I'll just sell that and be on my way. I could have, you could have argued I should have just kept going and not stopped at the store, but there's a really good, um, augment for 50 scrap called the scrap recovery arm which i very i'm very fond of but it didn't seem to have it a pirate ship arrives shortly after you do driven by the fact that it's attempting to avoid your ship you assume it's a smuggler trying to stay from beacons let's attack the pirate you power up weapons and move in to engage We'll fire our missiles so we don't get hit again by their missile launcher. They hail you. We realize our ship is no match for yours. If you let us go, we can make it worth your while. Typically, these surrender offers more offer more um, of these resources than scrap, but we do we kind of need more scrap right now than anything else. And I'm pretty sure I can kill them before they are able to escape, as this enemy FTL whatnot up here seems to suggest they are trying to escape. I'm going to ignore them and keep attacking. Their ship was tempor was apparently transporting weaponry, however, nothing seems to have survived the battle. So we got unlucky there, we didn't get more stuff like I hoped, but... Scrap is scrap. Let's head up here. A black market weapons trader spins you a tale of danger to the nebula before pushing his wares. You could either get a random weapon here, or he could just swindle you out of 45 scrap. So we're just gonna attack him. Oh, we got a rock man intruder. That could be a problem. trick I mentioned, just rotate the crew so they don't get to uh, kill anyone and get I still get the combat experience of killing, a, of killing a unit. Back to your stations. I'll send him back to get healed, because I think he's not shooting, so I don't need the extra evasion right now. Should explode, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. I'll just heal up my crew and head on to the next beacon. Hurry up and get towards the exit beacon. Both fleets catching up. 
You arrive in the middle of a plasma storm. Despite the hard conditions, a rebel scout seems to be waiting for you. So, when you're in a plasma storm, it will have your reactor capacity. So, both ships only have half their reactor ability to use. So, we want to, as quickly as possible, dispatch the enemy weapons. Some systems are offline. We are going to take some damage, there's no way around it. We have to ration our power wisely. a situation where you have to think very carefully what you want to have powered. They only have a laser so I can depower the engines. And the shields temporarily. Oxygen on and off as I need the power for other things. Playing very carefully, watching very carefully what turns on and off on the enemy ship. to the end the encounter. Ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Your ship emerges quite far from the beacon. You see a rebel ship waiting nearby, undoubtedly stationed to look for you. Attack the ship. Immediately pause, repower our shields. With only two lasers, they have no way to damage us because of our two layers of shields. So we can just pick away at them at our leisure. In fact, I can just auto fire the shields and sit back and let my ship do the rest. Except surrender. Not from a rebel. The ship explodes, leaving mine is a substantial collection of social scrap material. This is almost always what it says when you win, so I'm just gonna stop saying that. So I go through wideband comm channels as soon as you arrive. Nothing but static. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. With, however, without functioning sensors, it's impossible to tell what's inside. Let's attack and find out. So this ship has an ion weapon. Ion weaponry can disable shields and other systems. So for each ion that hits, it disables, it um, displaces one power from the system it hits. When you have shields up, it just automatically goes to the shield system. So hitting us for two, displaced two 
bars of power, so that disabled one whole shield. We're going to aim for the weapons, disable this, because unless this hits us with all three shots, we still have two layers of shields up, it can't hit us with this laser. We also have to be careful that we use higher weapons so that the enemy cloaking system does not evade, or does not help the ship evade our shots. Got a little bit unlucky there with the timing of the last ion shot. But. And now you see they cloaked, so I disengaged my weaponry so that I didn't miss and waste the volley. Now I'll turn my laser to the cloaking system, see if I can prevent it from evading anymore. And now it's just a matter of getting the last volley in and the ship's done. You sell what you can from the broken ship. Investigate the station. The station is a storage site for various resources. You savage everything possible. Sometimes it's resources, sometimes it's a weapon, sometimes it's a drone. This time it was just resources. Let's see. So we got like a one, two, three, four jumps. One, two, three, four. A pirate ship arrives shortly after you. Oh, it's a smuggler again. Let's attack him. Pop your weapons and move them to engage. This ship could theoretically hurt us if the ion hits and then both of this hit. That should be the only shot it gets through, though. Because now we're just gonna keep their weapon system down. But we're not going to let them get away. cargo was not salvageable. However, they seem to have been surveying the region. This says detailed maps and data. You download what you can to the ship's map. So we know there's an enemy ship to fight here. Other than that, I'm about as... I know about as much as I did before. A heavily damaged Federation ship is hiding the nebulas at, at this beacon. Before you have time to make contact with them, they fade to the nebula. Attempt to follow them and help them. The search is hopeless. Your sensors can't pick up anything in the nebula. Sometimes this gets you a crew member. Sometimes it gets you a fight with a rebel ship. Sometimes, like this time, it got you nothing. Let's head to this ship and then to the exit. Appears an automated rebel scout to be positioned within the nebula to warn if you're passing. The ship starts to power its FTL drive, but gets away from no doubt warn the fleet position. Alright, we have to disable their... Disable their piloting system and or engine system so they can not get away. That sound you heard there means there's a breach in this room, but we're gonna worry about that after the ship is down. Because we do not want a, a, a rebel ship to escape. If it does, it'll warn 
enemy fleet, their pursuit will be doubled for the next turn, which would mean we'd have to confront them before leaving, which I don't want to do that. I do not want to confront the rebel ship, or the rebel fleet, rather. The ship breaks apart, and you feel relief in the knowledge that you will hopefully still be one step ahead of the fleet. Gives me a little bit of resources. So, these red and pink lines mean there's no oxygen in that room, and crew members will take damage while in a room without oxygen. So I'm just going to send him to the med bay to heal up, and then back into here to finish repairing the, uh, what's it, sensors room. And the time it took to do that, enough oxygen pumped back in here after repairing the breach that he didn't take any more damage. On to the exit beacon. This long-range beacon is almost hidden within the nebula. When the, FTL t when the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. Alright. Uh, in nebula sectors, there's typically nothing going on at the exit beacon. So, we're going to head to the next sector, but we're going to do that in the next video. I'm Toss the Goats, and I'll see you next time.